And we are live. So, Caitlin, look into the screen. I am taking off my RD24 hat. Going back to the Magic Mountain in Vermont. The long... Is that where you... Is that where you go skiing and all it's that? A, it's a nice hill. It's not too huge. It's just a good uh, local hill up in Vermont. But and I got yeah. and they have cool designs on hats, so I like them. Original stuff, you know. Yeah. But uh, Salu, Chindan, Broccoli Rob, to Ron, Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh you know when you get emotionally invested. And you can't not when you really like somebody. Um, you know, you got married out of college to your college sweetheart. I did not. I, high school, kind of, actually. Well, there you go. So you've you've had, I'm assuming that you've had, you know, one great love, and that's awesome. But when you break up, when, you know, it's like a little bit of a breakup. It's like, you know, it's the relationship is over. There is you're sad you're like fuck man like this really i had high hopes for this thing (laughs) uh and you know it doesn't work out because fucking boomers don't want to let it go um mixed mixed emotions mixed emotions basically Mm -hmm. it you know it's you know after the midterms and i i hoped that the gop would have moved on And then Donald Trump got indicted. Although they were, yeah, he, he, what he announced in like December, he knew that these indictments were coming down the way, knew that he probably didn't have liquid to pay his legal bills. And then in March, he got indicted. And that's when the primary started breaking away. I think a lot of Trumpers think that, you know, I mean, Trump does have a high approval rating. I will say that Ron DeSantis still does too, actually, within the GOP election. Within elect- the GOP, yeah. Then the GOP's got kind of like a fifty-ish going on um, nationally. Trump's way less than that. Um, so is Biden. <laughs> I, you know, I supported Ron DeSantis through all of this, you know, like I, I through all of the news reports of campaign missteps because I believed in what he stood for. Um, I believe that he was a good governor of Florida. Um, you know, he governed effectively. Um, and Trump just runs, governs. When, when Trump governs well, he governs like a Republican. When he goes off, he it's just crazy. Um, you know, and I do have to say thank you to Ron DeSantis. You know, I I am glad you still ran. I, I yeah. really am glad you ran. And I'm, I'm glad you gave it to them. You know, in Iowa, Nikki Haley decided to spend millions of dollars in anti Ron DeSantis spending that did not benefit her at all. I just yep. that I can't, that strategy was not. Um, you know, I'm so glad he ran. Yeah, no, I'm very glad. I'm very glad he ran. Um, and enough people are saying, you know, he's, you know, can look to 2028 that he is viable in 2028, despite what esoteric CD uh, Jeff. What's his name? I forget his name. Now he writes for National Review, but he's like, no, it's done. Forget about it. Like, no, nah, man, you know, he's going to be governor of Florida through 2027. And at the end of 2027, he can, uh, was he? Yeah. Wait, no, no. Through beginning of 2027. And he can take, you know, he could start his campaign in 2027 for president and, you know, see what happens. Um. I, I want to thank him as well because it was it was a I, I don't give a shit what Matt Lewis of the fucking Daily Beast says or all these stupid articles about missteps like of oh they the campaign leadership and the fighting within the super PAC shut the fuck up shut the yeah. fuck up because look look and yeah. okay. when, he, when he got indicted 
they were they, the polls were were flat with DeSantis down like ten points for three four months and gaining on him like gaining on picking up in the past few weeks he gets div- indicted and it goes like this it is a clear thing the boomers double down they're like well fuck this we're gonna vote we're gonna reelect the guy you're not most likely and that's it that's all there is to it if he had not it, the funny thing is if Trump had not pulled his bullshit for January 6th and like just tampered his election conspiracy stuff if he had really done that and just went shut up he could have come back without all the indictments without all the bullshit nobody would have entered the race he would have been the odds on favorite for this year regardless without all the trouble and be leading in the polls and comfortably so with the whole republican party behind him but he didn't do that this is reminding me a lot of 1976 when um You know, I that's when Jimmy Carter was elected for the first term. Um, I, I It's not a 1980 situation because Reagan came in, was just so strong in 1980. Um, you know, it's it, but it is a reelection. Um, I with the polling that we see now, you know, you see one poll with Trump up four, you see one poll with Biden up four, up two, up, up any of these. OK, yeah. yeah. My biggest thing when I see polls like this is that the fundamentals on the underlying um, fundamentals of these polls show that Biden's likely voters are voting for Biden. They have not shifted at all um, over to Trump. So Trump is on top of the fact that Biden has a Mount Everest of cash on hand. He has now the most on cash cash on hand of any presidential candidate, I think. Um, because Dems get mad and they they donate to Act Blue. Like, I hate saying it like that, but that's what they do. Um, Republicans get mad and then they post on Facebook, which is actually not how I operate. I get mad and I actually do donate on WinRed. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I think this election going forward right now is lean Biden. <laughs> Yeah, no, they haven't spent. Or they have, they, no, he's got a, whatever you want to put this scale on. No, it, look, I mean, look, I, yeah. I give I give Trump uh, a one in five five shot at winning this. Anything's possible. I won't say like because twenty sixteen, every said, but he said no, Trump can't win. I'm not gonna say he can't win. I'm just saying he probably won't. I I think he has a twenty. I didn't think that in twenty sixteen. I do have to say I did not think that. I I. I just went with, you know, with the likely scenarios. You didn't see, you know, Hitler, Hillary was worse than went than Trump. And, you know, it just depends where we are. In less, Although I didn't in less vote for year. Trump in 2016. I didn't I, either. I blanked it. So, so, Jeff, you were in your college years during the Clinton years. I grew up with Hillary Clinton. OK, I grew up with this broad. She is a unique, unique type. There is a unique type of hatred for Hillary Clinton out there. And right. I, I do have to say I partake in that because I grew up with her. Like, she's clearly corrupt. Um, I think that there's a uni- unique, <laughs> sorry, it is so late and I actually am pretty tired. Um, it, there's a unique hatred for Trump, too. Um, yeah. You know, I and there's but the, the hatred for Biden's a little different, right? It, it's, it's not. It's just because he sucks. It's not because yeah. he. You know. I mean, he. He. He's he, not. He, sl- he did. It's just that he's just man old. Yeah. He sucks about ten percent less than Hillary Clinton. Yeah. You know, and but it's still a lot of suck. But it's not Hillary Clinton, and that ten percent is going to result just like twenty twenty, if he even makes it there. If Biden even makes it there. Which I wouldn't be surprised if the polls change dramatically that they slide somebody else in there that can beat Trump. Uh, because, look, the economy could get worse. Things can get worse. Um, right now, anything, the anything can happen. If it looks like Trump is going to win, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything past the Democrats to change it up. But I, I say we yeah, have about a 20 percent chance that Trump wins the election. One in five. Not great odds. Uh you know it's disappointing. Um, I'm tired of the, I'm tired of the fucking boomers. Just am like it's it's they are clinging onto this like 
you know, a cat with nine lives on its eighth. They're just, they're just there. They won't let go. It's just, it's just interesting. Like, right. Like it's, it's interesting. Like they think of Trump as this like martyr. And I wouldn't just say that like the New York indictment was bullshit. Okay. Like I would agree with that. But yeah. like the doc's case is legit, guys. Like I hate saying it like this, but like it's like no, I am sorry. It is legit. That case the, is legit. They are the 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 documents case is legit. See, the problem I have with this is that you know maybe aside from the definitely the Alvin Bragg one is nonsense. Um, the documents case is legitimate. Uh, the Georgia case is probably legitimate, but very tough to prove. And they're but, also having. But like issues but here's, with the here's, current here's, prosecutor or something yeah. down there. I don't know. Yeah, no, but here's my thing. They're all politically motivated. They're politically motivated, not legally motivated. And my problem with that is Hillary Clinton is still walking around free. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's client list has done nothing. Biden, I mean, Biden and Hillary Hunter, walking, Hunter and Joe. Hillary walking around free because yeah. Donald Trump, as president of the United States, didn't did go, not direct didn't go guest after sessions. Her. Did Didn't go decide to go after her. He straight up said that. So you know, like, like I yeah. that's where I have the problem. It's like, you know, Trump does stupid shit. He does it all the time. Like, and his his supporters will make excuses left and right for him. He does stupid things. But the thing about Donald Trump is, is as much as he does stupid things, his opponents tend to do even more stupid things. Mm-hmm. And that is one of Mm-hmm. his superpowers like he just brings out the idiots i just don't know if he can bring out the idiots I, as much as possible this time as he needs i, I don't know i mean i i struggle with this you know because the invariable question is like are you going to vote for him um the answer right now is i don't know but probably probably because i don't know judges but i didn't i didn't get the wall I didn't get, you know, draining of the swamp and the corruption. They uh, are the swamp, now, they, right? They are like the swamp now. I got all the, these scumbag, yeah, scumbag grifters left and right all over the place. You know, you you got Don Bulldock and and Jeff Deal here and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Carrie Lake and all and Dr. And Dr. Oz. Don, and Don, yeah, and Don it's, Bulldog it's, this time went around for Haley. Yeah, but it's just like that's who I get when when. Trump's run, and even if like, okay, so you get another term. Is he going to have the House? Likely not. Is he going to have the Senate? Likely not. It's like okay. And well, that, I mean, then the choice. The so, so I do have to say, like, us saying that we're going to vote for Trump based on judges and all this other stuff. Trump. I mean, God, House GOP. I can't even tell you. Like, my anger at them is pretty immense um because we sent them there in 2022 to to do a job they just can't handle this job okay um it's very clear they they clear they care more about Likes. who is speaker of the house and these petty politics rather than doing literally anything and the gridlock gets nothing done and the gridlock is not good like i it is not good. Like it is not good to have this revolving door of speak Republican speakers. Um, well, the you leads, know, it the leads down chaos. to one now. So they keep this shit up. They're going to get a Democrat speaker. I mean, right? Like, look, there, look, my, I, like I think this is what I'm saying. I'd, what, what, I'd hope the conference knows that by now, but you never no, know. No, look when you when when Trump's in, you get people <laughs> like Matt G- Gates with who g- gains popularity and is a stupid fuck. And does stupid shit like outs, outs Kevin McCarthy, and and there you go. And then Democrats win. Like, look, the, the one thing is very clear: Trumpism and Trump's whatever success or winning ways, if you can call it that, you know, from one election, does not extend beyond the man himself. It doesn't go to anybody else, and I don't even think it'll go to his kids. I don't think it'll go to Don Jr. and and all that. It's him. I mean, he, he's got that, you know. You have to say, out of the Trump children, Trump children, I actually, I I liked Junior before, but now I don't really like him. That's a fair I think assessment. Eric, I think Eric Trunk, yeah, 
Eric Trump does a lot of good charitable work, which I think is really good. Like, I, I do have to say, like, he does do a lot of charitable work for St. Jude's Hospital, which I think is awesome. Not a huge fan of Lara Trump. To be quite honest, I find her completely unrelatable. And I've always liked Ivanka, so... Yeah, I'm, I, look, I get nothing, I get not, nothing, just, I get nothing against not. any of them. I get nothing against any of them. I'm just saying the the magic doesn't extend to the kids. It's it's him. He's you know he he's got the charisma, and that's what Megyn Kelly. I'm gonna go through my list of the fucking people I hate right now. <laughs> um, Megyn Kelly, as hot as she is, and she is a nine and a half. She is smoking. Fucking hate her. Like. She, you know, she's part, she needs the clicks. The people that need the clicks to make their living, like Megan, um, you know, weren't willing to say, well, couldn't say, look, Trump sucks, but he's going to win it anyway. They were like, well, he's got charisma. Oh, he's fun. Oh, he's entertaining. And people want to be entertained. Well, and I'm an entertainer. It's like, okay, shithead, like, fine. Fox News. Everybody of Fox News. Fox News put him over the top. He, they put him on those boomers. They're yes, the entertaining aspect is not going to be great when Trump loses to Biden, and we have to replace. <laughs> yeah, now we're going to get. We're, they're going to. They want to pack like, the court. Fifteen judges. Like you know, shit. people. These people think in the short term. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's like. Back in the day, like the Republicans after the 60s had more long term thinking about wins and successes. We just don't anymore. And I think that's because our national RNC is weak because we have weak leaders. And the incentive I mean, structure, the incentive structure in our world. Is they care more about, about ratings and money. Yeah, if they care more about the money than they do about winning like national elections. The thing is that Democrats don't they have the money and <laughs> they have the money and this ability to form long term plans like yeah. I, at the current moment. Like they <laughs> Trump is their perfect foe. Like he brings out every single blue haired liberal woman and 10 of her friends to the polls like I. That's who he is. And I'm not quite certain on our Republican side, Trump's going to have the same amount of support he did before. And that's where I'm concerned. No, so. no but even if it's, I, I get, I get a liberal Democrat governing, you know, I don't get a conservative governance. I don't get even close to what I want. I get somebody who's weak on fiscal policy, who's, I'd say half the reason we have inf all of the inflation we do spends well, like, we spends like crazy. We practically have a war going on in Yemen right now. Mm -hmm. Biden, the Biden administration took that terrorist group of, you know, pirate, pirate terrorists off. Was it the Houthis? Mm -hmm. Took the Houthis group off of the terrorist list. And now we're in a <laughs> kerfuffle we're in, we're with in a, We're in a shooting war. Yeah. No, yeah. look, I, I get a moderately better government with Trump for one term and probably setting the stage for Democrat wave in 28. Again, lack of long term. Thinking. Again, I mean, it's right. like it's just a big shit sandwich, um, <laughs> you know, and even if it's about the judges, we're not going to have we're likely not going to have the Senate again because of Trump. In 2018, well, in 2020, I, and 2019, and all that shit. So it's like, fuck. I'm um, I'm hoping we do. So like right now, we're looking at okay. So like West Virginia is already flipping. I just want to say this as an aside. Ohio has um, Sherrod Brown. Actually, this is probably the last time that we will have a amiable map. Um, and then there's John Tester up in Montana. These are two red states. Montana is a little bit more weird because Tester has high approval ratings. I don't go by morning call and sell. I go by, you know, like pulling firms out in Montana. His, appro his approvals are pretty high. Uh, Sherrod Brown, um, I think he's the weaker of the two. Um, because if Trump runs up Trump plus nine, I think that would take out Brown. Um, the only thing is, is that Brown has a lot of money. He's sitting on a he's lot of fucking incumbent. money. Don't ever underestimate. You can't 
I just think it's just going to be some. And he's been, he's been for the last four years keeping his fucking mouth shut. Like I. And by the way, who? who is, by the way, who, who's running against Brown? Do we have? Do we know? We don't know yet. Yeah, and it could be some shithead. Like so. It's Ber- like there's Bernie Moreno. I only keep an I, eye on. I would, him. you know. He's a businessman. He's been up Trump's backside. Well, there you um, go. We we've seen that. We've seen that play. He does have a lot of money. Um, but also Frank LaRose, who is a state politician in Ohio, who I like, so. Yeah. Um, well, Nikki Haley's still in the race. Um, <laughs> for the time being. For the time being. When she gets beat on Tuesday. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if she's going to be the VP. She does have a lot of money with her. I think there's a, I think they think that if there's their secret little plan and by they i mean you know the mega donors the ken griffins of the world um think they can get her you know kind of maybe they'll get lucky in the general election and then she's installed as you know as president and then you, you kind of get what you want and it's like i, I mean know. see i don't know i see the thing is i don't know about these theories right like i i Again, I, I've been very underwhelmed by Nikki Haley this entire primary. She went from being super complimentary of Trump. She ran millions and millions of dollars of ads against Ron DeSantis in the primary in Iowa. All she got out of it was her unfavorables going up um, almost to 50 percent um, amongst the GOP electorate in the state and across the country. Um, so I don't know. I don't know about that. I think that if I were to be a betting person, I'm not a betting person. I think Elise Stafanek, um, Lee Zeldin, um, because he's in Florida now. He's not a New York resident. Um, I also think Christy Nome in, she's in South Dakota, right? Yeah, Christy Nome. And I would say, I I don't know about a Congress, congressman or, or congresswoman. I think Tim Scott's in there too. I think it's uh, probably no, just by name ID, Gnome and Scott, or Scott. And knowing Trump, he'll probably pick Gnome because she's good looking. Like, you know, that's ew, it. Ew. <laughs> what, ew. What do you want? What do you? What do you? Where do you no, think? I, sorry, where do you bars, think we are? <laughs> uh, Jeff, the bars in hell. Okay, like yeah. I, I'm just saying ew, but it's just like <laughs> unsurprising. <laughs> it's. I mean. Look, fuck! It's so disappointing. If you're like, if you're an actual philosophical conservative, a governing conservative, or even lean that way, this is just like a nightmare. This is a nightmare because now we know like what we've gotten with Trump. We know what we've gotten, and it's not going to be better than the first term. So we're going to get a lot of. You know, I, it's funny. I, so, I saw something come across on Twitter today. I think was, post January six yeah. indictment Trump is worse than twenty sixteen Trump. Like the thing is, is like twenty sixteen Trump was funny, and his the mean tweets were funny, and then like after that, the shit got real, and it's yeah. just like, it's just like I just don't find it funny. I don't think losing it's, is funny. The, like the jokes, the 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 lame jokes from all of it, the diehard Trumpers are so corny. It's just like shut up. Everything it's like when when they say, you know, oh, we're going to, you know, red wave in 22, red wave in 20. It's just like all nonsense. It's all bullshit. It's well, all I think bullshit. we I think this is that I think that we could have had a red wave in 2022. You want to know what happened? Trump pulling all these primaries. Yep. yep. Like the thing is, is that like you look at all of these races that we lost and like they were easy like to win races and we just didn't win them. Like <laughs> we didn't message well. The most of the story that was put towards the media is the Trump primaries and all this other stuff it didn't play out like the Tea Party stuff. We Chuck, have Schumer put, Chuck Schumer put millions. <laughs> behind trump's candidates yeah because they knew and they did the same thing look when alvin bragg look i got it look golf clap to the democrats for doing this dastardly plan uh they democrats know our voters better than even trump does they let's be they did it you know they they want trump to be the nominee 
They're going to get Trump as the nominee. And whether it's Biden or it's somebody else at the top of the ticket, they're going to unleash a mountain of cash with clips from January 6th with all the bonkers things that he said that we haven't even heard of, like in the past year or so because he's been like not on television a lot and saying crazy shit well, at he's, rallies. He's, like, about, he's about to be on television a lot. I hate saying it like that, but he's going to be on TV now. It's, like he's got, he's not going to be able to do the basement strategy of Biden. He's too much of an entertainer and can't help himself. Like he, and he's also going to be in the courtroom more. Like that's the thing. Like I'm fairly certain he has a trial coming up, right? Well, this is the other thing. I I don't know how. Like this is real. Look, the Dan the Democrats are fucking ruthless, and they play a very dangerous game. And when you play this game of chicken where you dare the other side to nominate the guy you really want to run against, but as a part of that, you're you're putting the proposition that you're throwing him in jail. You're tempting fate. You're really tempting fate. Now look, I you know, I don't know what would happen or if he'll get convicted, but let's assume one of those charges goes through what then and i mean that like how we're we're in like everybody keeps looking towards the past of like 2012 and 76 and 80 and you know we talk about this stuff but we are in uncharted territory he's a convicted felon does he run from jail is it house arrest does he get locked we walk do away? we do have <laughs> example of that in our american history but he did not run on a national and on national party eugene debs was ran from jail way was he, back in was the he day. a communist the progressive, uh, uh yeah the progress in the 20s or 30s or something yeah i think it was 1900s okay I mean, still, but like in, but the major, the one of the two major parties in this country put a political campaign together, rightly or wrongly, like legally sound or not, it was still a political prosecution to go after the num the front runner of the opposition party. That's really, really dangerous, and I don't know how that's going to turn out. I mean, I, I get why the the boomers reasoning behind this and i get why when it di when i when the polls diverged let me try to do this on screen when they went one way and one the other and they separated on that line that was when it happened when alvin bragg and uh, put forth the indictment um yeah and and i'll reiterate what i said i don't want to hear about campaign missteps and super PACs because that is such inside baseball stuff oh he should have started uh, earlier and he should have hit trip hit i i love this i simultaneously hear from the uh the the morons who are like oh well he should have hit trump harder from the beginning oh he should have been nicer to trump and backed him up with during all this stuff it's like shut the fuck up it wouldn't have made it, it wouldn't have made any difference because of the indictments um and that's the one milestone mark in this campaign that you can actually you know take to the bank yeah um uh fuck john pod his tweets today, oh, yeah. his tweets today were disgusting like like yeah. maybe he was drinking or something i don't know but i i unsubscribe from commentary i love commentary podcasts but fuck him fuck him what what like yeah, what, like i'm gonna support you what's, what's that his tweets about Casey were not great. No, but it just, just all of it. It's just like, like, why say, like, I'm not that, like, Nikki Haley sucks, but I'm not going to be, like, all bent out of shape because she ran and, like, deprived Ron DeSantis from momentum. Like, yes, I am. Like, it, but I won't be too low. No, but I, but whatever. Uh, you know, John Pot Horitz, man, what the fuck? It was. No. I just don't understand the 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 Nikki Haley thing, right? Like, I just don't get it. I mean, I I do kind of get it. She puts on a yeah. good, she puts on a good mask. Um, I, yeah, I just I don't think going after Ron DeSantis's wife is a classy move. No. Um, well, as far as Nikki Haley goes, it's like I've read that one of those the NBC. 
um, you know, uh, recap of, of DeSantis' campaign and Ken Griffin, the billionaire, who I actually, I was down in the Bahamas last weekend, and on the plane ride down there, uh, I watched Dumb Money about the GameStop stock uh, thing from a couple years ago. And Kevin Griffin, the char- yeah, as a character, was featured in it. He's not come off favorably. <laughs> he comes off like everybody fucking hated him. Um, and he wouldn't, he, he didn't want to back DeSantis because uh, DeSantis was going after too much of the culture war stuff. So it's like, well, I get that. Okay, we know where you're coming from. You and Chris Sununu can go have your fun in, um, you know, in I don't want to, I don't want to fight land. Uh, that's why they picked Nikki Haley because Nikki Haley doesn't want to fight the culture war. Um, Ron DeSantis does, and he's good at it. Uh, so I don't know. What do you think Nikki Haley comes in? I think if, you know, what, 40%? Does she overperform on Tuesday? Yeah. Does she overperform on Tuesday? She's at 38 in the polls. I think she underperforms. Underperforms. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if it's like, if it's Trump's six plus six, you know, 60 or more percent, it's pretty handily. And then you go into, does she stick around for South Carolina? To get stomped no. in South Carolina. I'm sure. State. I'm sure. Uh, Jason Miller gives a nice phone call to her campaign manager and says, "I need to speak to Nikki Haley, and we need to cut a deal." Do you? Does she go for VP? Does she take VP if offered? Because this. Because we, <laughs> yeah. look, with enough rumors have gone around. I think she would. I do think she would. Yeah. Does that unite? <laughs> does that unite the party? Do you think? Do people go? Uh, okay, well, let's vote for Trump and get behind her because he'll resign and Haley will pardon him and then we'll get President Haley. Does that, I don't know. that... The thing is, is I don't know because I know that MAGA doesn't really like Haley, but I also know that if Trump, Trump puts her on the ballot, puts her on the, the ticket, they they will about face and They'll, sing yep. a different tune in a one minute. So yeah. I, I don't know. They will make, he will make them like her i mean i mean right now literally today ron DeSantis drops out and he is complimenting ron DeSantis left and right so i have no idea don't um, know um yeah yeah we're in trouble <laughs> i don't know um who else do i want to say screw you to all right megan kelly did that john Podhoritz. uh Look, the online grifters, you know, who need the clicks, whatever. Um, who anybody you, can you think of that debase themselves in this campaign? Who, on the other side of this, would we? Tim Pool. Tim Pool. I know I haven't liked Tim Pool since the beginning, but Tim Pool, holy fuck! That just an little... angry, angry beanie guy. That, Very that, angry. That stupid, Always beanie, angry. He, the autistic little idiot. He's just, I can't, I never, I never liked him to begin with. Um, you know, he was always of the left ish, you know, kind of like one of these, you know, again, these creepy libertarian types who like, they're not exactly, you know, progressives, but they're damn sure not, you know, liberty minded or, Freedom minded or conservative, uh, to say he the got least. mad the other day that people brought up Ron DeSantis's record on COVID. Like, I was just like, What the? F- you are not, yeah, well, okay. Man. There will be no reckoning, Hunter will get away scot free. So will Joe, so will Hillary. Hillary so, was always getting away. Well, the second, yeah. the second I, Trump said that they weren't going to go after her after he won. You want to know why Trump and Hillary used to be friends? Yeah, it's fairly it. certain that uh, the Clintons uh, or Trump or whatever came to their wedding, right? So, does it disappoint you that, like, on some level, like it's not a movie? The bad guys are going to get away with it. Like Hunter is a big piece of shit. I, I mean, I, I like European movies, so that's pretty much the case in everything. <laughs> The bad, the bad guys get away with it. The bad guys get away. There's no good ending. Everyone sucks in the end. Yeah. Yeah. The grifters, like the the Charlie Kirks of the world. Charlie Kirk is going to be sitting in his million dollar house yeah. that he got because of grifting to Trump, and he yeah. will be fine. 
Yep. Hunter's going to do cocaine till he dies of a heart attack. Good for him. Uh, Candace Owen, another one. Just Candace <laughs> Owen is married to the son of a British peer, so she will be fine. There you go. Everybody's making out. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah, the bad guys get away with it. And here we are. It, it will take, I mean, the thing is, is like, it would take several loss cycle. You know, we went through this with mass GOP and all their leadership stuff. It's going to take several losing cycles. Yeah. Speaking of, so correcting that might as well end on a, I'm still running for state committee. Now nobody's going to show up on March 5th. <laughs> um, if you pull a you Republican, if you pull a Republican ballot, well, look, I got, I got, I'm working on my mailers. This will just be a yard sign and mailers campaign. So if you just raise money and send out mailers, uh, my mailers are ready to go. So now it's just if you want to uh, donate to my campaign, hit hit like or something on the on the episode or reply back in the episode. I'll have that the, the donation. You can you can actually just Venmo me or pen or PayPal me uh, for OCPF rules. There's really not much to do, but um, for mailers and yard signs. Uh, to help shape the state committee and actually get Massachusetts back in order. So, yeah, so that's something on March 5th. But I don't know. I guess the race would be more like 2020 and no one's going to show up. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to vote. On... I'll vote. I'll vote. I'll, you know, I'll I'll vote. I got to show up always... and vote for myself. I always, yeah. I mean, I, I always show up and vote, so. Although, my day. What the fuck are we going to talk about for the next 10 months? I don't know. <laughs> the polling, I guess. No, but is, uh, do we even have a Senate race in Massachusetts? I don't even know. Is Elizabeth Warren? No, it's is Ed Markey up for re-election, or is there no Senate no, race this year? I don't think there's a Senate race this year. I don't think we have any real big ones. Okay. No Senate because race. No, 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 no. I think Liz Warren is up, right? Didn't she win re-election in 2018? She beat Jeff Deal by 30-something points. That's right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Nobody so uh, up. that'll be great. Uh, there'll be nobody to do a challenge Elizabeth Warren. Seriously. <laughs> um, good. And she's another fucking boomer. Um, oh, God. It, it's so depressing. She's so cringy. She's so cringy. Hmm. Yeah, and by the way, like if you if you think you're uh, like if you're a Nikki Haley supporter and you're like giddy about this, like <laughs> slow your roll because she's about to lose New Hampshire. Cause, so because it ain't down. gonna because it ain't gonna happen. Um, her yeah. momentum ended the second she got yeah. third, and I just want to throw it out there. The great. I just wanna, I also want to throw it out there. That, like again, so Jeff, you've always lived in New England. Or, like, you've been around New Jersey and stuff. I've lived in the South. Um, New Hampshire Republicans, us, them being the first primary in the nation, it's not like 2000 or 2004 again, where there was probably some alignment on some national Republicans. New England ours are very out of line with the rest of the country, even though you and I are not out of line with the rest of the country. Right. I think overall, the especially under Trump's GOP, New England ours are out of lockstep with how the rest of the country votes on with the Republican Party. I think that that would change if if Trump was not in charge of the Republican Party anymore. It should or change. Or if there's a full leader. But the, the, I don't know. I got to say that uh, let, let's talk about this for a second as we, you know, we're going like 40 minutes here coming up. We can wrap up after this, that this has got to fucking change. This, this is, it just sucks. It's like, okay, you campaign your ass off in one state, Iowa, and like basically Iowa decides it. What? Well, it happened in the past. It's not always decided it. That's the thing. Yeah, like, but, it's not, but it's like, but, but it's the Demo it should be, unique. but then we have super Tuesday. I think eight, I seven, think eight weeks later. And that's I, think, I agree with you. The thing is, is I agree with you. I wish our primary and caucus schedule was a little bit tighter knit. Um, I think that 
Iowa is more in line with the general GOP electorate nationally than New Hampshire is. That that's my only yeah, thing. But sure, sure. But it should. What I'm saying is is you know on Super Tuesday, uh, several states vote for mm-hmm. the first election, whether it's January or February or whatever. Several states should vote. Several, because now we're coming out of Iowa where 14% of Republicans voted. There's 700,000 Republicans, maybe 100,000 voted. And yeah, ha- half of that, so 7%, 7% of the Iowa, Iowa Republicans essentially decided who the nominee is going to be. Iowa's very low turnout. It was very cold that night. Yeah. I, my, my thing about that, though, is that even when it's cold like that, it's always cold like that in January in that those type of states is cold here so my thing is is that that shouldn't have been a the weather shouldn't have been that much of a stopper because they're used to that weather so i think that there's an enthusiasm we'll see on tuesday i think there's an enthusiasm turnout issue with republicans as well yeah i'd agree with that i don't know we'll see We'll see. We, I, we I honestly, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. Like the, the, I mean, we lost another special election in Florida, so I don't, you know, we've been losing special elections. That's mm-hmm. not great. So. I, can, I can say comfortably that the people who, they're, look, while I may, and I haven't decided on this yet, but I'll probably, you know, vote Republican up and down the ticket because what the hell. I, I may not. Maybe I'll decide that. Trump didn't earn my vote. I don't know. But I can say this. The people who, the way the people behaved online, in real life, Fox News, Megyn Kelly, John Podhoritz, all of all of you, like, there's no going back after this. You've, you've totally, like, this, this, you know, shifted. And everybody who performed admirably, I guess in their analysis, even if, you know, it was in one candidate's favor or not, yeah, it's probably fine. But there's plenty of pieces of shit that I'm just like, I'm done with you. Go fuck yourself. Um, and uh, if I think of any list, I'll add them to the, <laughs> to the tweet of the episode. Um, but, you know, look, I got to see, well, I told you about this. I went up to New Hampshire on Friday. And I saw- Did you, did you go? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, I brought my. Did you meet him? I didn't meet him. It was packed. He couldn't really. I mean, you know, it was a tight room. It was packed room, small, smaller room. You know, a couple hundred people. You know, jammed in there. He spoke for about an hour. I could tell the enthusiasm was not even in the room. Like it was weird because there was like a bunch of Quinnipiac college kids in the front row, and they were just like stone faced and not clapping at anything. So Quinnipiac, really? Yeah, they were up there. They all had the sweatshirts, so I saw that. And then, you know, one protester jumped in. Oh, God. They escorted her out. Um, But I, I mainly went up there to... I got the thing from Never Back Down. So, uh, the text, I just signed up. And I brought my daughter up there, because I wanted her to just see what it was like to listen to a serious candidate... Uh, talk about serious things, and and Governor DeSantis brought up some issues, um, like uh, where somebody actually brought up human trafficking, and my daughter's like, "What's human trafficking?" I'm like, "Huh?" So I said, "All right, you know what? Well, I'll tell you after." And we went to Chick Fil A and got some dinner, and mm-hmm. you know, I explained to her in the car ride what it was, and it was a serious evil thing, and you know, not in getting into detail, but essentially how what happens, and um. You know, she's at the age where she's old enough to understand these things, and it was good that she was there, even though DeSantis dropped out, like, today. So this was two days ago. Um, It's good for her to be, be exposed to that and for you to show your kids what you want a good role model to be in politics, which is not, you know, not Joe Biden, <laughs> which is not Donald Trump um, or Hillary Clinton. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you want somebody who has pretty good character and gets the job done. But we're not going to get that this time around. We're going to get more bullshit and drama. All right. I don't know. Anything else, Caitlin? 
No, I mean, I am sad that this was the outcome, but onward, I guess. That should be, that's the slogan for 2044. Onward, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we got a lot to be grateful for in this life, you know? We have, uh, we do have a great country, you know, family, friends, freedom. We do have, we do have a lot to be grateful for. And, you know, why we get involved in politics is to protect that, defend it, keep it going, mm -hmm. keep it going. You know, that's why we fight the fight. That's why right. we say what we say. Um, you know, cause it's, it's, there, there are forces that don't want that to happen. There are forces of destruction and evil in the world that want to see America go bye-bye. And, uh, they're in this country and they're outside this country and you need serious people to take on serious challenges. Um, and unfortunately we don't have a lot of that right now at the top. Unserious people. We are surrounded and governed by unserious people. So... Maybe we'll get some serious people soon enough, but it doesn't look like that way right now. All right, all. I'll wish you a fond farewell and good night, and we will talk yep. to you next time. But until then, uh, I will leave you with a quote from John McCain. <laughs> it's always darkest before it goes pitch black. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye. Good night, guys. <laughs>